Hey there, it's Rooney K95 here, and you're watching the video on this raw uncut video that I'm doing here on the physical media video library series. So I have to do this like a little camera angle type of way, so to speak, as well. As you see on this book shelf on the wall, it's a little, because I made room for where I have my light novels and my book, Samurai from Outer Space, Understanding Japanese Animation book. It is on this shelf there. Yeah, because I'm starting to have my otaku room devoting as well. In case you're wondering as well. Let's move my PS4 remote out of the way. And it's gotten to a point though is that I'm figuring out a way to starting to do a new video here as well. And on top of yeah, on behalf of this though is that these are the ones here. I'm showcasing in the movie genre categories between 1981 and 1982, which are these ones right here. I'm gonna have to set these on the floor as well because I'm gonna be doing a video like this as well. Yeah. So I'm put this on camera. Because I've been doing these kinds of videos as well. Why not? Because. Once I yeah, the reason. There you go. So this is all set right there in a little camera angle kind of way. Just there and right there. So let's do the video right now. Because I'm doing a little multimedia kind of feel with this raw uncut video right there, which is filming on my tablet as well. Okay, let's do this video. Welcome back. Okay, so at this point I am showcasing these movie genres from 1981 to 1982 that I wanted to do that I haven't thought of doing one for the first time as well. Because why not? I have been picking a couple of anime movies that were released in 1982, I, I believe, yeah, because I had to pick those for my anime collection because I have a real reasonable feeling, though, as well. So, this is how it goes, as well. So, as on, as on being said, I'm showcasing the movies from 1981 to 1982 with these ones right here. Yeah, because I wanted to do a video like this one, which I haven't thought of doing one, which I should have done as well. So, yeah. Without any further ado, which is right here and right now, let's dive into the movies of what I got here on the... So let's begin. Okay, the first one here I got here on the VHS from 1981 is The Fox and the Hound. I got this on VHS so, as well. Well, I haven't got this for a long time as well. Apparently this one did got a DVD release as well. Well, there is a lot more produced out there. Despite that this has a... A... Double feature with Fox and the Hound 2 on the Blu-ray. But I'm wondering if they will release it, just the, the first Fox and the Hound separately. Like just this one to have a good proper Blu-ray release. Just like... The... Standalone standard Blu-ray release for Fox and the Hound as well. I mean, we'll get to that of how we can imagine. And another movie that I just got here on VHS, and that is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Another movie I have here on VHS, which I got as well. 
this was found in a bunch of other VHS tapes that I was going through at my grandmother's place as well. Yeah, because this was free as well, which I didn't know it was part of the free VHSs on there. And one of those, like, plastic storage bin ones. Yeah, I may... I'm, I'm guessing I'm thinking it is. It's just my theory, though. Yeah. And this is basically a 1989 Paramount home video release on here. I mean, what is it? Yeah. Because, I mean... I cannot figure out there, if there's the, the, the date copyright on this on here. Like, on a little barcode thing like that. I cannot find a copyright date on this tape on there. Just let me know in the comments section as well about of about the Raiders of the Lost Ark VHS has the little thing right there where I'm not sure if it has the copyright on release date. Well, not exactly copyrights. No, it's actually the VHS release date. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and let me know about it. Because, well... I guess I'm thinking is a 1995 VHS release. Yeah, because it's not because the movie has a problem. You just got a VHS cover of this and put it in there. Like, how... Like, why do they do that? Yeah. I noticed there's other editions on Raiders of the Lost Ark on VHS on there. Like... From the Gulf of Western Company on the tapes on there. Yeah, that's my theory, though. Well, you get the point, though. This one apparently did got a Blu-ray, DVD and Blu-ray release on here. Which I have here. And, of course, I have another 80s fantasy movie from Paramount which is made in conjunction with Walt Disney Productions, and that is Dragon Slayer. I had this on DVD on here for a long time, which I have right here, which I showed you before as well. Because you know what it is, I'm going to talk about it, but you know what it is. Another movie that I got here on DVD from the 80s, and this is actually my favorite from Ralph Bakshi on here, and that is American Pop. I'm wondering if this will ever got a, get a Blu-ray release on here. Despite that, this was the only Ralph Bakshi movie I got on DVD. Yeah, because Ralph Bakshi is the creator who brought you Fritz the Cat, Heavy Traffic, and many of his other works like Hey Good Looking and Fire and Ice. I mean, this is way better than the, the crap movie uh, Cool World. I think I like American Pop a lot better than Cool World, in my opinion. American Pop, I can throw in any time as well, because I wonder if American Pop will ever get a Blu-ray release as well. And another one I have here on Blu-ray that I got, which I have here, and that is Heavy Metal, which is one of my favorite 80s sci-fi movies on here from the AT. Well, this is basically like an anthology movie on here. I did a movie review a while back, and then I did a redo review of this movie on a while back, which I did videos like those a while back as well. Yeah, I got this at Respeeding Music a while back when I was buying a lot of anime on there as well. Well, technically, Heavy Metal is actually a Canadian animated movie. It's one of those, like, you guess you have to call, like, animated films for grown-ups as well. Which, they don't make these kinds of movies like much as they used to as well. And another movie that I got here on Blu-ray, and that is from the 80s, and that is The Road Warrior. This is actually the follow-up to the previous Mad Max movie on here. I want to get the other two Mad Max movies that Mel Gibson starred in, such as Beyond Thunderdome and the first Mad Max movie. So I think that basically completes the this set on there as well but pretty soon I will be picking them up on blu-ray this is basically a call like movies that take place in a setting in post-apocalyptic setting as well for what Mad Max the Road Warrior has got this different type of setting 
of how this is, takes in a post-apocalyptic setting for a movie like The Road Warrior, because I got this at a library for, at a book sale for like one dollar, huh, not bad. And another movie that I have here on Blu-ray, no, no, on DVD that I got here, which I think I got this a long time ago at Barnes & Noble, and that is Poltergeist, and that's the, the first one. This is way better than the crap 2015 reboot movie one, but this is a classic. This is from the director who worked on... This movie was basically directed by Toby Hooper, who recently worked on the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But this is produced by Steven Spielberg, who recently worked for other movies like Close Encounters of a Third Kind, Duel, and E.T. the Extraterrestrial, which are the great examples of what Steven Spielberg and Frank Marshall had a lot to do when they worked this movie as well. Yeah, this one apparently did got a Blu-ray release a while back, if I'm not mistaken, as well. And of course I have Pink Floyd The Wall, which I have on DVD here. This is a 1999 Columbia Music Video release on DVD. This movie on DVD did came with a poster on here. Yeah, this is a little hybrid feel of using animation and live in the live action sequences in this movie. Yeah, this one did came with a poster. Now I gotta show you. I have that on my wall, huh? Yeah. Pretty soon I'll have it on my wall at this point. Once I can laminate this poster one of these days as well. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I should have that as on the on the wall. Yeah, it's good to have posters on your wall as well, which I've already shown you before. Apparently, this never got a Blu-ray release as well. And another movies I have here, there are a couple of different versions on here, and about there are the ones that have these extras that were never featured on subsequent Blu-ray releases on, with a DVD on those combo packs from Shout Factory. And you know what I'm talking about? The Last Unicorn. We all know that this movie was based on the book by Hugo Award-winning author Peter S. Beagle on here. This is produced by Arthur and directed by Arthur Rankin Jr. and Jules Bass, which is basically... They recently worked on numerous Christmas specials, what Rankin Bass did in the past as well. And not only that, this is also animated by the Japanese anime studio called Top Craft, that recently worked with on Hayao Miyazaki's film Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind as well. Apparently the DVD of the Last Unicorn, the 2007 DVD release from Lionsgate, has a mini-documentary, The Tale of the Last Unicorn mini-documentary, which was never included in the DVD Blu-ray combo Enchanted Edition from Shout Factory, which was never included. Although, this has some of the newer features on here, unlike the, the, the Lionsgate DVD release, which is presented by... 16 by 9 widescreen format as well. Well, you get the point, because I'm using it as a pretty good example, that's why. In case you're wondering as well. And another movie that I got here on Blu-ray, and this is my favorite 80s sci-fi movies from the 80s, and that is Blade Runner, which is my favorite 80s sci-fi movie. I have basically realized that when I first saw that I got this on Blu-ray at Respute Music, this has got me introduced to Blu-rays as well. 
Well, why not? Because why do I have to get this on Blu-ray? Because, well, this has three filmmaker commentaries by Ridley. And, and this also had on this Blu-ray release of Blade Runner. This is the final cut. And also, this also did got a 4K Ultra HD release of Blade Runner on Blu-ray as well. But there is also the five disc edition set of Blade Runner on Blu-ray, um, the final cut five disc edition set on there, which I have realized. But this also is available in the collector's tin set that has this on the on these every editions, like the, whether it's DVD or Blu-ray. But I had to get this on Blu-ray though. Because, why not? Because I had to get the Blade Runner on Blu-ray for the first time as well. Because, it's gotten to a point, though, is that I really have a thing for how I wanted to get this movie on Blu-ray. I mean, if you don't have a Blu-ray player, then I, I, I recommend you picking up a Blu-ray. Despite my PlayStation 4 plays both DVD and Blu-rays... Yeah, this could take the cake as well, especially when it comes to having this on Blu-ray as well. And now I own it as well. Yeah, and this one has an introduction by director Ridley Scott, who's basically recently worked on Alien as well. And if you open this up on here... Here's the disc of Blade Runner, what it looks like, if you can see here. I love how I want to get this on Blu-ray as well. I, I have been, got the thing of how I wanted to get this movie on Blu-ray as well. And that's the true thing is. There is some good high definition quality for a Blu ray release like Blade Runner, the final cut, as well. Despite that the movie Blade Runner was released in 1982, this is the final cut edition on Blu ray I have here. This is a 2010 Warner Home video release on here. As you can see, is that I wanted to buy this as well. It's in a cyberpunk-like setting of how in the 21st century. What this has some extended scenes, and this also includes some previously unseen special effects that were never shown on the original theatrical version. On there, not bad. That despite that this movie runs about an hour and 17 minutes on here. This is the perfect example of how you can watch this movie as well. Yeah. I never knew that this movie has some extended scenes on here. Wow, that's pretty neat to... Well, it's good to have to put every extended scenes to be added in a movie, which you can see this movie to watch that has some good extended scenes on there. Yeah, it's part, particularly in my recommendation on good movies as well. And finally here, I have a couple of some anime movies, and I have here is Raiders of the Galaxy. This is like the hilariously awful Korean-produced giant robot anime. <laughs> it's one of those so bad but good as well, but we all it's just what it is what it is as well. Because, you know what I mean. And at last, I have another an, an anime movie that I have here, which I consider to be one of my favorites on here. And this is the one that I wanted to get back in 2019, which is my favorite anime movie from, that is, came out in 1982. With, well... 
technically this was released in Japan, and that is Arcadia of My Youth. This is my favorite 80s anime movie from how this is based on the Space Pirate Captain Harlock manga. Well, this was created by Leiji Matsumoto, who recently worked for other ones like Galaxy Express 3-9 and Space Battleship Yamato, all are also known in here as Star Blazers. Yeah, this DVD was released by Animego in 2003 that recently worked for numerous DVD releases for Yurisa Yatsura, what Animego has released. Despite that, this is depicted in its original uncut and unedited form on here. This is presented in its original Japanese with English subtitles on here. I mean, there's a lot produced on here. This one also did got a Blu-ray release from Discotech Media, which includes the English dub under the title as Vengeance of the Space Pirate, which is basically the English version of Arcadia of My Youth, which was originally released on VHS by Celebrity for Kids Home Video VHS release with the English dub on here. But I got this from... Despite, we do get this release from Animego. This is also released on VHS and Laserdisc as well. And this also includes the liner notes, which I'm going to show you if I have time, as well. Here's the disc. They later re reused it for the Discotech Media release on there. And here, this came with liner notes. I didn't know this has liner notes. Well... What can you do? It's Animego DVD releases that have lighter notes on there. This is just like how it has with my Yurisei Yatsura DVDs and the Oh My Goddess OVA DVDs. Yeah. If you look at this, on the Arcadia of My Youth, lighter notes on this one, this explains about the plot on here. If you could pause it, read it if you like. And this also has the songs that are in Japanese translation, with the English translated, such as uh, Taiyu wa Shinai, Shinanai, translated as The Sun Will Not Die, which is performed by Asahina Maria. And I'm not going to re-narrate the lyrics on there because I don't want to butcher it. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, it's just what it is. And there's some more on the back on here. There's the... This also includes the Image song, which is... Hoshizora no O Last Song, or Last Song of the Starry Sky, performed by Asahina Maria again. Again. And I cannot narrate those, because I don't want to butcher the song as well. Which it could... I don't understand why. And... Waga theme song, Waga Seishun no Arcadia, Arcadia of My Youth, performed by Shibuya T Tepe, which you hear at the end of Arcadia of My Youth on there. And, of course, I'm not going to narrate the, the lyrics on here because I don't want to, like, butcher the, the song on there, which will ruin it. But this, here's another image song by Yaku Uya Ni Hitori, Alone in a White Ar Arctic Night, performed by Shibuya Tepe. And I'm just going to look at the words. I'm not going to narrate it as well. You know, in case, because otherwise I need to rewatch the movie, that's why. Arcadia of My Youth, classic movie on there. One of my favorite 80s anime movies on there. This is directed by Katsumata Tomoharu as well. This has promotional trailers, image gallery, filmography, and this has a preview for The Dagger of Kamui also on this DVD, and Super Dimension Fortress Macross on the theatrical trailers on there.
Or is it promotional trailers? Yeah, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because yeah, the image, the back of the DVD on there says Japanese language sub titled in English on there. Yeah, you can see the, lo the little logo that they show on there. I think you may see that on those Yurisei Yatsura DVDs as well. Yeah, because I haven't realized about this. So that's going to be it for my video here for t today here on the Physical Media Video Library series for today, you guys. Thank you for watching, but before we go, here's what I'm going to say for this video. Well, because I'm showcasing these movies on here in the genres, whether it's action, it's fantasy, sci-fi, and there's also some anime on there, because I have a couple of them on DVD as well. And that's the reason why I wanted to cover this video, which is something I wanted to get at, at it covered as well. Despite I've done a lot of my videos here on the Physical Media Video Library series in the past, that's why. Subscribe for content my Anime Planet, link in the description down below. If you want to check out my Anime Planet, the link will be in the description down below. If you want to check out my Anime Planet, because I have a huge backlog of manga and anime on my Anime Planet account as well. If you want, let me know your thoughts in the comments in the comments section below on this video also. And if you want to check out, be sure to smack the like button if you enjoy this video. Click on the subscribe button. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, RuRoniK95. Feel free to join my channel, especially if you're new to my channel as a newcomer. Smack the notifications bell button. Be sure to get notified also as well for more latest updates I have here as well. And that's all I got as well. Well, I got another video as well because I had to do this video because I'm going to be doing my library vlog video Saturday in like because I know today's Tuesday yeah in four more days because I got to do my library vlog which I'll be doing on a Saturday in like four more days as well this is Ruroni K95 saying thank you for watching my video I'm glad you liked it I hope you enjoy it Hope to see you soon for the next video. Hope you have a great day. This is Ruroni K95 signing off. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you soon for more videos. Take care. Bye. So it was 10 o'clock on my video. I got finished up the this video with a little intro on the physical media video library series here. So let's do this as well. Hey guys, this is Ruroni K95 here, and welcome to the 2022 edition of my DVD and Blu-ray collection library video series. So today, in the movie genres between 1981 and 1982, I'm going to be showcasing these ones. And there's also a couple of some anime movies that were released in 1982 the same year as well, which I have right here as well, because I wanted to do this video particularly so yeah so without any further ado let's dive right into this today on the physical media video library series and of course that's how you do the intro on there okay this is easy to put away starting off with these ones here So I'm going to put a couple of those right there as well. Yeah. I know it's 10 o'clock and i got to finish this video as well, to edit as well. So yeah. I'll take care of the thumbnail as soon as I can as well. I think the DVD... There's the Galaxy Goes in between Razafon and Rom with one half of my anime collection. And same with Arcadia of my youth in between Area 88 and Argento Soma in my anime collection also. Whew. In case you're wondering how the hell I did this as well. Because I wanted to do this video, that's why. I know you this too, that's why. So this is it for my raw and uncut video. This is Roni K95 signing off.